So your company comes back and says, oh, hey, we have a new admin application we'd like to launch. And so now we've got to fit that into our architecture here. <laughs> now, as we previously talked about, you know, sure, we could just spin up an entirely new version of our architecture. That's fine. And it would work. Eh, but that wouldn't be all that fun, now would it? <laughs> and also, we can handle this a lot better and a lot more efficiently and effectively using Docker. So we know that with Docker, we can put multiple things on one host machine without having to worry about collision. We know that it'll be easier to manage and configure them since containers are isolated. And we also know that if we ever want to move them in the future, well, we just have to make sure that the new host we're moving them to has Docker on it. Well, even though this sounds fabulous, you know, looking at this, how do we get the traffic into our containers? How do we manage them across multiple EC2 instances? How do we connect them to our load balancer? And geez, even if we get them connected to the load balancer, how do we split the traffic between containers? I, I mean, there's a lot of questions here. <laughs> and no, Docker does not solve them for us. But AWS Elastic Container Service does. AWS ECS, so Elastic Container Service, it allows us to do a very simple workflow. Make the Docker image, give it to AWS ECS, make the EC2 instances and tell ECS about them. And once you've done that, ECS will then take over managing those instances and putting containers on them for us. You then make an application load balancer, which is just a type of load balancer. And you also tell ECS about that. And once you've told ECS about it, it will also manage routing traffic to our individual containers with the load balancer. And then you're done. <laughs> and that's it. With that done, ECS will take our Docker image, create the containers from it, put them onto our instances, and we're good. And with that application load balancer, it'll also handle spreading traffic across our different containers. Now, using an application load balancer, and again, this is just a type of load balancer, you know, in AWS, nothing to, to be intimidated about it. Again, at the end of the day, a load balancer is just another server that they will preloaded with some software, except in this case for load balancers, you can't really go into them because AWS just pre-makes them for you. But using an application load balancer, we can do things like even route traffic based on the URL. And that's pretty neat, not just being able to send it to a host or a load balancer, but based on the host header that comes into our load balancer, we can direct it to a different container on the same machine or a fleet of machines. And the beauty of it all is, again, we can have all these containers that may all have different applications on them and all different operating systems on the same EC2 instances together, which means that we're making the most of the resources that we have. And what about if we want to update the containers? Well, simple. Just give ECS the new Docker image and it'll take care of redeploying the new containers for us. And so because of that, our next step in making our architecture, if we had a new application you know, that we wanted to, to share our same fleet of servers and not have to remake the architecture, well, that would be to first turn the original application into a Docker image. So we want to get a Docker ready. Then we need to take the new application, also make it into a Docker image. And again, that is just what? Making the Docker image is telling the Docker file, what are you going to need in it to run this application? And then putting the application code in the Docker image. And when you can create a container, it'll have all of those things in there. So when you've done that, make sure that Docker and ECS are available on our EC2 instances. That is a step. You do need to tell your EC2 instances that, hey, you belong to ECS is watching you. You're a part of their club now. And then finally, you deploy the containers using AWS ECS, which ECS does for you. So there's not even really a step for it. <laughs> well, with that done, most of our interactions in terms of updating our application will be done through ECS now. We won't have to mess with the actual instances themselves because really, since all the EC2 instances need is Docker and ECS, the things that are required to work with it, well, we can largely leave them alone and just sort of treat them all as the same. Now, the best part of this is that when we wanna deploy more applications and services later, we can just follow the same pattern again. Now, 
Disclaimer, there is much more to ECS than we covered here, as I've said. But again, if you want to learn more, you can check out our free series on this whole topic called the Hitchhiker's Video Guide to AWS ECS in Docker. However, this is pretty much it from our 50,000 foot view. And it really does, you know, settle scaling and adding new services in general. If we need more scale, just add more EC2 instances. ECS will worry about putting more containers on the new machines, which that's pretty neat. And if we need more services or applications, we'll just make a new Docker image and hand it over to ECS. And so at this point, we're really going to be looking at optimizing how much of those hosts we use. So that would be the next question here. Okay, great. So we can put whatever container and application that we want on our different instances. Well, if that's the case, how can we make these things as lightweight as possible? And of course, how can we make the user experience the fastest and the best that it can be? Well, that's what we're going to tackle next.